by faith. So now you go to God and you say, God, thank you that I am healed. You are speaking what was already done. That is righteousness of faith. Thank you that you have already made me rich. So I set my hand to do something because whatsoever my hand does, it shall prosper. So now I set my hand, not trusting in my hand, in my work, in my effort. I trust in the righteousness of Jesus. Because when you trust in righteousness of Jesus, it is like Adam entering directly into the seventh day. That is the day of rest. It is entering where everything was created for Adam and God put him exactly the evening of the sixth day. So he began the seventh, he began into the Sabbath rest. Amen. He began into Sabbath rest when you go back and study in Genesis. So this is righteousness of faith, which is of speaking. So very, very important that you speak. How we came to, how we concluded this. Why? Because when, when I saw that how you can be established, in righteousness, which is the best righteousness? His righteousness is the best righteousness. So to be established in his righteousness, what you do? You have to speak. You have to speak to be established in his righteousness. Very important. What do you speak? Can someone answer last Sunday's sermon? What do you say? The same thing that God said. Say the same thing. Say the same thing that God said. Speak like the righteousness of God. Who is the righteousness of God? Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God, who was made sin and has made you now the righteousness of God. So when you speak the same thing that God said, what are you doing? You're speaking just like God. And when you say, what are you saying? The word of God. I said, say the same thing the word says. So when you speak, when you send the word, who is word? Jesus is the word of God. He has another name, which is the word of God. So you're saying, you're sending the word of God. And the word of God, which is the spirit of God, it hovered on the earth. The spirit of God kept moving, kept hovering, and things came into existence. Amen. So when you speak that word, when you speak like the righteousness of God, that is like God, then you are established. Established in righteousness. Amen. Strong, firm, foundation, rooted. That is called being established in righteousness. I've written a statement. Uh, you, can, you can show them so you don't miss out when I am saying. When you speak like the righteousness of God, meaning exactly like God, it works you are established in righteousness of faith, which is his righteousness. Take the screenshot, meditate on it, just understand this. It's very, very powerful. Amen. So I want you to be established. What, what is the Bible talking about? Uh, uh, correlated words, being established in righteousness. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 61, verse number 3. What a beautiful scripture. To grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress, instead of ashes, the oil of gladness, instead of mourning, the garment of praise, instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Did you see? It says that that they may be called oaks of righteousness. They may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that uh, he may be glorified. From this scripture, I've taken title for today's message, Oaks of Righteousness. Repeat after me, Oaks of Righteousness. Amen. 
So it says very beautifully, they shall be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. What is oaks of righteousness? What is it trying to explain? What is the metaphor? What is the meaning? When it says oaks of righteousness, it's talking about a huge tree which has deep roots, which has strong root. The tree which is not easily uprooted by a storm, by wind, by rain. The tree that stands for generations a tree that lasts for centuries, the tree that is sturdy, the tree that is firm, the tree that is deeply rooted, the tree that does not bend, that does not easily break, that is what the Bible is saying, thou shall be like the oaks of righteousness. Amen. Show them in NLT version so you understand what I'm trying to mean. See that in a New Living Translation, the same verse, Isaiah 61.3. It says they will be called like the oaks of righteousness. Those of you who can write your writing, put it as uh, in NLT version, it says they shall be like the oaks of righteousness. Like the oaks of righteousness. What is it like the oaks of righteousness? Please show them the Strong's Concordance, H352. See, when, when I saw this word, in King James Version, it says trees of righteousness. In ESV, it says oaks of righteousness. In um, uh, NLT, it says like the oaks of righteousness. Show them the uh, Strong's Concordance. Everybody online audience are able to see that. It says in Strong's Concordance, H352, the Hebrew word is ayil. The meaning of that word, trees of righteousness, okay, it's talking as, it, it is the usage of it. It can be used as the ram, a sacrifice, it is used as a pillar, the doorpost, it is like a strong man, leader, chief, mighty tree. What does this give you the picture? For given generation, you should know by now. When it says the leader, the chief, the ram of sacrifice, it's basically talking about Jesus, amen? Who is sturdy, mighty, strong, the righteousness of God, Christ himself. The Bible says, they shall be called oaks of righteousness, amen? Mighty, strong, the leader. The meaning of that is like a oaks of righteousness, like a mighty tree. Now are you able to relate? No wonder that mighty tree, that oak of righteousness, the righteousness of God, Christ himself is in you. The son of God who died on the cross of the Calvary to make you sons of God. Now you are called the son of God. You are called oaks of righteousness. Amen. What a powerful truth. If only you understood what Jesus did and you're called the oaks of righteousness, you will lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, that I am called the righteousness of God because of what God has done for you and for me. Very, very important. If you see that verse, Isaiah chapter 63, I just read that uh, to you. The verse says, to all those who mourn, to all those who mourn, who, who were, Jesus always put things in perspective. I really like that. The order, the Bible is always orderly. It says, he came to comfort all who mourn. All those who mourn, all those who were grieving, all those who were disappointed, all those who were sad, all those who went through grief, people who went through brokenness, people who went through bad marriage, bad childhood, all the brokenness that an individual goes through because we are in a broken world. All that you have ever gone through, the Bible says to them, show them Isaiah 61.3. To them, they shall be called. Who, who is that they? Please put your eyes on that scripture. Can you see that? To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, in their righteousness, who is that they here? They will be like great oaks. Look at me. The Bible says they. Who is that they? They who? The previous verse. Beauty for ashes. They who were like ashes. They who mourned. They who were disappointed, distressed, the people who were in despair, they, those people, they will be called oaks of 
righteousness. That means God is saying, when you come to me, everything that was broken, I restore. I make it be rooted, be firm, be strong like an oak tree to be called as the planting of the Lord to display his splendor. Planting of the Lord. You will be the planting of the Lord. When they see you as a big oak tree, the planting of the Lord to display his splendor, to display his glory. They see you and say, God is a good God. They see you and say, God healed you. They look at you and say, God restores. They look at you and say, God prospers. They look at you and say, God heals. Amen. When they look at you, they see the goodness of God, the planting of the Lord to display his splendor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, my dear friend, coming to the crux of the message. Nobody starts off as an oak tree. Nobody starts off as a mighty tree. Right? Nobody starts off as a mighty tree. Baby got encouraged with uh, oaks of righteousness. <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, it says, as oaks, please understand, nobody starts off as an oak tree. Nobody starts off as a mighty tree. Everybody starts off as what? Very good. Everybody starts off, thank you for that answer. <laughs> Everybody starts off as a seed. Very good. We all start off as a seed. So, a tree starts off as a seed. Oak tree starts off as a acorn seed, right? Mustard tree starts off as a mustard seed. Mango tree starts off as a mango seed. It starts off as a seed. You and I started off as a seed. When we were in our mother's womb, we started off as a seed. Then we grew physically. When we were born again, when we took our baptism, again we we born again as a seed. Are you getting my point? What is that seed? The seed of the faith of the Son of God. Romans chapter 12 verse number 3. It says, you and I have the measure of faith. What is the measure of faith? The faith of the Son of God. The faith of the Son of God is the seed. Now why am I coming to the faith? Let me tell you. It all starts off with the seed. So what a seed needs? Seed needs sunshine, seed needs water, seed needs soil. So sunshine, I refer it to S-O-N, son of God, right? As a seed, we have to look to the son of God. Behold him. 2 Corinthians 3.18 The more you behold him, behold his beauty, you become like him. The water, what is water? It is the water of the word. You have to give the word. You have to speak the word. Hear the word. Meditate the word. See the word confess the word the word of God next is soil what is soil heart is the soil you have to believe when you speak thou shall believe in your heart do not doubt it confess it with your mouth when you give all these three what happens the seed begins to grow it becomes seedling it becomes sapling. It continues to grow. It has a pattern. There is a process. There is a process that we see in the Bible. First the blade. Then the ear. Then the full can. So step by step the seed is growing. So when you were born again, you are made perfect. You are made holy. You are made righteous. Where? In your spirit. But in your mind you do not know that you were that. You are the righteousness of God you didn't know. So as you continue to learn, what is happening? You're watering the word. You're watering the seed. You're watering through the water of the word. You're beholding Jesus. And what's happening to the seed, the faith of the Son of God that you have? The seed is growing. Continue to grow. That's why, if you remember, when I started the series of righteousness, I gave a very powerful scripture. Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 13. I said, the one who is unskillful in the word of righteousness. He is a babe. Can you please show them the scripture? Hebrews chapter 5 verse 13. It says, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. The one who is unskillful in the word of righteousness, the one who does not know the word of righteousness, the one who is not grown in righteousness, he is a babe. Are you, are you getting my point? Now, how do we grow in the word of righteousness? I, I've already told that in my series, Hebrew 5, 14, when you see, you have to train your senses. When you train your senses, you become not unskilled. You've un, not unskillful. You become skilled. 
skillful in the word of righteousness are you with me now how can i continue to become skillful and not remain in the babe i have a beautiful revelation are you ready with the for the revelation go with me into the book of proverbs next verse in the book of proverbs it says please look at that verse a wise man is strong yes a man of knowledge increases strength all of you hear me a man of knowledge increases in strength i told you it's a seed i told you it's a sapling if the sapling has to become strong what does the sapling need strength how does strength come it says a man of knowledge increases in strength what knowledge we need knowledge of the world knowledge of carnal world we need the knowledge of the word of god the knowledge of the son of god it is the epignosis that we need when we grow in the knowledge of righteousness what happens you're becoming strong when you have the knowledge of righteousness of god's word you're becoming strong mentally strong physically strong emotionally strong financially strong you're becoming strong amen because you're growing in the knowledge that's what i've been doing sunday after sunday teaching the knowledge of righteousness teaching the knowledge of son that's why we have made a decision in the church that we are going to teach the knowledge of the son from the pulpit we will preach jesus unveiling jesus sunday after sunday because the more you look into jesus you are a seed you are a sapling you need the sunshine the more you see the sun you're growing to be just like the sun which you're already in the spirit but in your mind and in your body amen amen so you should increase in the knowledge of the sun when you increase in the knowledge now you've been increasing in the knowledge of righteousness amen so the next thing what you do next thing i told the one who is the righteousness now that you got the knowledge that you are the righteousness of god everybody got the knowledge do you all agree with me that you are the righteousness of god now what does the righteousness of god do what does the righteousness of god do the only thing it does is speaking that does not nullify works i am again saying because you should not misunderstand or misquote what i am saying we do faith actions but the priority is it's not righteousness of law is doing righteousness of faith is speaking so righteousness of faith does speaking so now from a acorn from a seed to become a giant tree what you must do speak let me make it very practical simple all the parents you have small babies you have infants you have kids you have grown up teenagers adults those watching me online grandparents you all have kids right they are like seeds right they are like saplings how you can make your children be sturdy strong like a oak tree as parents you know what you do you speak the righteousness of faith speaks you speak over your children everything that god says about them say the children of righteous are mighty in the land say my children will grow up keep the faith my children will serve god this house shall serve the lord say the word of god over them say what you want them to be say what the word of god says about them call those things that do not exist as though they do speak and those of you who are teenagers those of you who have mature mind those of you working professionals couples speak over your life husband speak over your wife wife speak over your marriage speak Sp don't speak negative don't speak lies don't speak what you see <laughs> speak what you want to see amen amen don't see in the mirror and say i have a big belly when am i going to lose this fat say i have returned to the days of my youth i am looking very best say what you want to see amen do not alter your words amen a one who changes his word is a double minded man when you speak what are you doing you're watering the word from where i got this principle from jesus shall i prove it to you shall i prove it to you show them beautiful scripture luke chapter 17 verse number 6 so the lord said if you have faith as a mustard seed if anything is in the form of a seed what do you do you you can say to this mulberry tree be pulled up by the roots and be planted into the sea and it would obey you is jesus telling take the axe cut the tree get the jcb get the workers 
tie the rope we see right how tough it is to cut a tree god is telling just if you have the faith of a mustard seed so if you have faith of a mustard seed that means if you have a seed what you do you just speak and the tree will be pulled out how is it related seed and tree that means if you have faith of a seed that seed can even pull up a tree that means as you continue to speak that seed is growing into a tree are you able to relate that seed is growing into a tree go with me to matthew the next scripture matthew it says if you so jesus said to them because of your unbelief for assuredly i say to you if you have faith as a mustard seed if you have faith as a mustard seed you are a seed when you are born again right you have the seed of the son of god am i right in your spirit you are just like jesus now it says in the book of ephesians you have to grow up to the full stature of christ how do you grow up to the full stature of christ by our works trying to do things like jesus by speaking so when you speak right things when you speak the word of god eventually you are becoming a tree with deep roots you are becoming a strong tree because god said when you have faith as a mustard seed you will say please repeat this after me all of you if you have faith, you have faith. as a mustard seed you will say you will say amen so you have a seed you have a seed what is it said the faith of the son of god in that faith of the son of god in that seed jesus said if that is like a mustard seed in that what is the prosperity what prosperity to lend to nations that much prosperity isn't it to lend thou shall lend to nations that much prosperity in that seed you shall give employment to uh, everybody in your company you you own your company government will come to you and ask you for loan that is the word of god that seed has that much potential right in your body whatever pain is there whatever is the report of the doctor it is a it is a fact but it's not the truth that seed has the power to grow and it becomes such a tree of strength health that sickness will not last so what you must do if you have faith of a mustard seed what jesus said these are red letter words in the bible what jesus said you must say you must say say to that body say to that sickness say to that poverty in your uh, in your bank say to that uh, uh, bank balance which is minimal say to your children say to your colleagues say in your marriage say everything that god has said about you amen amen are you getting so when you say what's happening when you say to the mustard seed what's happening to the mustard seed it is growing because you are the righteousness of god and it is growing colossians chapter 2 verse number 7 it's growing it is growing when it is growing the roots are becoming deeper and deeper and when it becomes deeper you're becoming a huge tree like a oak tree like a palm tree like a olive tree which often bible talks about psalm 1 psalm 52 psalm 92 it talks about trees jesus always talks about tree mark chapter 4 talks about seed the soul well it talks about seed and the trees why god is giving us a principle here if you have a seed for anything it's more than enough that seed that one single acorn seed has wealth wealth of acorns wealth of trees am i right today god has given you the book of seeds what seed you want every seed what is your need you have a seed already amen take the seed and what you do with the seed you speak you sow it in your heart right you believe it on the right ground soil sow it in your heart and then you speak it when you speak it what do you say you say the same thing that god says colossians 2 7 when you see in colossians 2 7 it says be rooted where you have to be rooted as a seed having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him please focus on that word having been firmly rooted are you rooted are you rooted in christ firmly rooted and it says and now being built up when when you are born again you are rooted in christ your seat in heaven is secure ticket to heaven is secure no problem but then to reign in this world to 
reign in prosperity, to reign in health, to reign over sin, sickness, and Satan, you need to receive abundance of grace and gift of righteousness. So when you receive the Lord's doing, the Lord's work, the finished work, what you're doing, you reign in life. How you reign in life? Being rooted. Amen? You're rooted in Him. Now how, how you reign? Now being built up in Him. How you can be built up in Him? How you can be built up in Him? Righteousness of faith is by speaking. I told by speaking you can be established. That is the only way you can be established. We connected Romans 10 to Isaiah 54 part 1 of uh, Oaks uh, the, um, uh, saying the same thing. Righteousness of faith that last Sunday I uh, taught. So righteousness of faith speaks. So when you speak you're being established, being rooted. You're rooted in Christ. So even if there is storm, even if there is famine, nothing happens to the tree. The roots are so deep it gets the water from everywhere and the tree continues to remain for centuries and it will bear fruit in all seasons at all times. Amen. He is like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. By streams of water, he shall produce fruit in all season. Amen. Psalms 92, I've taken a beautiful message on palm tree which will produce fruit in every season, at all times, in all ages. You can see that uh, message on palm tree, very powerful revelation. So what the Bible is trying to say, palm tree, oak tree, olive tree, it is just trying to tell you, my dear child, I have given you seed, and you are his seed. You are his seed. Every seed produces after its kind. I told you a mango seed will produce only a mango fruit. Today when I say you are the seed of the righteousness of God, what do you produce? The fruit of righteousness, God kind. That is Galatians chapter 5 verse number 22. The fruits of righteousness, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and temperance, self-control, amen, faithfulness. All the nine fruits, it will automatically come. You will produce as you're rooted, as you're grounded, as you speak. When you speak, you have to believe. I taught that. You must believe what you say. To believe what you say, what you must do? You must hear, you must see, you must meditate, you must mutter daily, right? Uh, mutter daily, then you speak. Now you believe it in your heart and you speak. So kindly speak life, speak healing, speak health. You might be too tempted to speak your situation, to speak your emotions, to speak what's happening around because we are so brainwashed and trained by Satan for all these years. It's okay. Continue the good work. Continue to speak. Continue to speak. Then what happens? The seed grows and grows and becomes a giant tree established in righteousness. You are established. When you are established, what happens? You shall be far from oppression. You just speak the word and you resist the Satan. You speak the word and you resist the spirit of fear. You speak the word and everything is at your command. Amen. That's exactly what Jesus did when he was on the planet earth. He, in the book of John chapter 10 verse 14, it says he did not say his words. He said the words of the Father. And who did the works? Last scripture for today and I'm winding up. Show them that scripture. Jesus said, I'm not, I'm not saying my words. I say the words of the Father. And who does the work? Can you see that? It says, the words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father, as he remains in me, does his work. Who does the work? So you do speaking. Who does the work? Are you doing the work? Father does the work. Father continues to do the work. Amen. Thank you, Daddy God. Thank you, Daddy God. We just receive all that you have done. Amen. Glory to God. We believe you were blessed by this message. Our vision is to make known the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you. You can be a blessing by partnering with Priya Abraham Ministries to share this good news. To partner, visit priyaabraham.org slash partner.